Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a wavy line pattern that's sort of like a maze. These are quite fun to make and we're going to make a simple one today and you can just extend the process to make your own and make a more complex one. I'm starting with a new file, 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size. My pattern piece is actually only going to be 400 by 400 pixels so I am creating a rectangle, 400 by 400 pixels. I'm going to remove the stroke from it and I'm going to fill it with just a color. It doesn't matter what color you use. This is now going to be the element I'm going to use for my pattern. So I'm going to select it and choose Object Pattern Make. I'm going to turn off my artboard because it is a little bit difficult to work out what the pattern piece is and the artboard. So I'm going to choose View and then Hide Artboards. We're going to be designing in this area here. We created a rectangle to make our pattern from because it's just a really good starting point. And it's an easy starting point. I'm going to the pencil tool. I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to give it a black stroke. I'm also going to set the stroke weight to something like about 14 points. I'll double click on the pencil tool because I want to make sure that Fidelity is set to smooth so that it's going to sort of iron out the wrinkles that I make as I'm designing. Let's just zoom in a little bit here so I can see a bit more clearly what I'm doing. So back with the pencil tool, the trick with these designs is that you're going to need to keep an eye out on both sides of this pattern because if you cross this edge here to make your pattern, at some stage you need to have a line that crosses this edge here opposite. And if you cross here, you're going to have to have something that crosses exactly here. So you can make different shapes and shapes that go in and come out of a different area, but at some stage you're going to have to have a line over here. Sometimes it is easier to make these using a post-it note, just sort of scroll out what you think you're going to make on a post-it note because that then gives you something that you can work with. Now I've got a couple of anchor points I don't like here. I'm going to the pen tool in anchor point delete mode and I'm just going to delete them just might make life a little bit easier. Now I'm going to select on my shape I'm going to choose object path and then simplify. This will allow me to potentially simplify my shape. So I'm going to bring my corner point angle threshold down and set my simplify curve a bit higher and you can turn this on and off. In actual fact it's making practically no change to my line at all. If that doesn't work, you can try the Smooth tool with the line selected. Just target the Smooth tool and just roll over anything that you think needs to be smoothed out a little bit. So you can see I'm coming in at this edge and later on I'm going to have to join it up with something over here. And I'm coming in here and later on I'm going to have to join up with something here. I'm running out of room a little bit so I am a bit concerned about that. I am going to just go and grab my line, not my rectangle and just shorten this because this will give me a bit more room to come in and out here. Let's go back to the pencil tool and make the second shape. This one I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go out over here. I've lost my format here so what I'm going to do is select my line. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. I'm just going to click on this other path to add the features of this path to this one. It's a nice easy way of solving a minor problem here. I also want to get rid of this anchor point because it's not a very nice one and I'm going to drag this one out a little bit so that this line is coming more smoothly into this one and this one is relatively smooth over here. Now they're not perfect but right now that's not really a problem. I'm going to add a line around here. This one's just going to go in and out here. Now I do have a problem in that I'm not seeing this line but if I flip to this alignment I'm going to see it. Now that throws other things out but I'm happy with this the way it looks right now and I'm willing to deal with these problems individually. So now that we've got sort of basically the lines we're going to use in this pattern, as I said this one's going to be fairly simple because you will want to just practice on something. Let's have a look and see what we're going to do. I'm going to locate this line here and I'm going to start lining things up but it would 
benefit me if I locked down the background right now because if it starts to move, you're just going to get into a bit of trouble. Visually, it's not going to help you. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Here, I'm just trying to line these up better so that I get a smooth join. The other half of this join is down here. So you might have to work around both pieces of the join so that things can start to move a bit unfortunately. If you need to, you can just remove anchor points. I'm going to remove the one at the end there. I don't think that's helping at all. That will make it a little bit easier for me to line these two up. Let's go down here and let's see what we've got here. I think I've done myself a disservice on this shape. I'm just going to remove it entirely. I'm going to redraw it because I think if I watched out for the closing point for this line, I would be able to get a sealed shape, which I can there. Don't be afraid of just getting rid of a line if it's not working for you and trying something a little bit different. So that one's joining up perfectly. This looks pretty good. This all looks pretty good to me right now. I'm going to turn off my tile edge. I'm going to zoom out. You're going to want to see this at a reasonable size. I'm also going to turn on more copies. So I'm going to use 9 by 9 and let's just click away from the shape. And at this point, you can look and see if you've got any problems with your design. This one's pretty good. It is a very simple one. It's only got three lines and one of those lines is actually a loop. So we didn't have to do any joins on that. But you can see that just extending this principle is going to be as simple as making sure that when you draw your line, if you go out over this edge, at some point you have to have something that's going to come in over this edge. And as I said, mocking it up on a post-it note is a really good idea to get an idea as to where everything's going to go. And then you can just draw it yourself in Illustrator. Now we're done with this pattern. I'm going to click Done. Let's go and redisplay our artboard with View and Show Artboards. I'm done with that rectangle. I'm going to add a rectangle that is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, which is the size of my document. So I can test out my pattern. I'm going to line it up to the document, go to the swatches panel and add my pattern to it. It's gone in as a stroke, not a fill. We can size it with object transform and then scale. We're going to turn off transform objects. I'm going to reduce my pattern to 50%. Click OK. Let's just scale up the document to the full size of my window. I did that by pressing control and then zero. Now at this point, we can recolor our pattern very easily. I'm going to the recolor artwork tool. I'm going to click on advanced options. I am able to recolor this black. If you didn't have something here, if it was just a little dash and nothing here, you could click at this point and say, yes, I do want to add another color. Make sure that it looks like a arrow so you can recolor it. I'm going to make this white. So I'm just going to double click on it because I know what I'm here to do. So I'm just going to make that color white. And at this point, I could make the pink any color. I'm actually just going to make it pink right now. That, of course, adds a new swatch to the swatches palette. So we've got our old swatch and our new one. At this point, I'm going to recolor this again, and I'm going to take this to black. You can see here that the white is not able to be recolored because it doesn't have a color stop there. What you would do if you wanted to recolor the white is just click here and say, yes, I do want to add a new color. Make sure it's an arrow and then you could recolor it. I don't want to, but I'm just going to click OK. And so now our original pattern, the white line and white and black. And of course, we could continue on and recolor this pattern as much as we wish. I think these are fun patterns to create. Obviously, you can create much more complex designs than this by just using more lines. But the principles are the same. You just need to be aware of where your lines are going inside your pattern piece to make sure that they're placed in a position where you can join them up to give this sort of seamless line look. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. 
using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.